no bones about it. If you want to appeal, you have to file that money in order to do so. So it didn't sound like Elaine Bredehoff uh, was ready to maybe concede that point. She wants to address that in some type of motion or something, and she said she would do so. Uh, but the judge really had no time for any um, whatever was going on in that courtroom. I don't know how to quite explain it. She was very to the point, very direct. Uh, she basically, you can tell, she is done with this case. Uh, ben Chu drafted uh, the judgment, and the judge said, I will be signing this. Uh, and there you have it. So there was no discussion about a settlement or anything like that? Zero. And zero. And I didn't anticipate a settlement at all. Um, I didn't anticipate that. Uh, Johnny Depp has, in his own view, been through hell for six years, okay? We've basically heard him say that, I'm paraphrasing, during the trial. He said he lost nothing short of everything. Why would he settle? I mean, he, he believes he was right. The jury <laughs> ruled in his favor, except on that one count for Amber Heard. Uh, so I don't think there, you'll hear anything about a settlement. So it appears that this is going to be moving on to the next stage of the appeal. Who was in the courtroom, Ann Jeanette? Um, I'm assuming Amber Heard was not there. Were there any representatives? Who was in the gallery? Any supporters? So there were Johnny Depp supporters there. I would say maybe uh, fewer than 10 uh, Johnny Depp supporters, people that we had met throughout the trial who were here. Uh, I was here, obviously, as a, a news person. There was another print reporter who was here. Uh, another. So there were probably three or four media types, uh, media types here uh, listening to all of this. Uh, but it was pretty brief. And as I mentioned, this was a formality. Uh, I do want to mention, too, there had been all these people asking whether or not Johnny Depp's team would file for an injunction after the Dateline interview by Amber Heard, since she made what a lot of people view as additional defamatory statements. Uh, that did not happen either, and I didn't think it would. Um, when you start talking about limiting someone's speech, I think that you would have to be very careful about that type of thing. So uh, that didn't happen either. I think that they are just thinking to themselves, we, we won this case, we were right, and we're moving on, and uh, you can file your appeal, Amber Heard, and your attorneys, and we will answer uh, your documents that you file. We will file answers to that, and that's how they're proceeding. Do we have any sense about what role Elaine Bredehoff or J. Benjamin Rottenborn or Camille Vasquez or Ben Shu are going to play in the continuation of this case as it moves up to an appeal? I mean, are they staying on Johnny Depp, Amber Heard's team? I, I have an understanding that uh, Chu and Vasquez may be representing Depp in a different case, but do we have any understanding of how much these attorneys are going to stay with them as it moves into the appeal process? Well, they've been representing him now for years. Uh, they represented him in the case with his former business manager, manager Joel Mandel. And they settled that case. And I was told, you know, basically during this trial uh, that that case had been settled in Johnny Depp's favor. The, conf the settlement was confidential. The terms of that settlement couldn't be disclosed, but that Johnny Depp got something out of that. So Bra Brown Rudnick has been representing him now for quite some time, a and it appears they will continue to represent him if there are additional uh, legal matters that come up. Obviously, Adam Waldman is his attorney, uh, his personal attorney, uh, but you know, Brown Rudnick appears to represent him in these other, what I would call other matters. Now, just walk us through real quick, if you can, what the next steps are in terms of, so you mentioned the bond, you mentioned that Elaine Bredehoff <laughs> might be fighting this in terms of a motion. Now, if we move on to an appeal, um, when do we have a sense of when that might be, when they, she might have to file, what, how this process is going to work, uh, where it might be, anything like that, Anjanette? You know, she has a limited amount of time uh, to file an appeal. They've already filed the notice of appeal, and I'm looking through my notes, Jesse, because we weren't allowed to have any electronic devices in the courtroom, and I was writing as uh, quickly as I could. So I, I think that they ha she has to file something um, somewhere between 21 and 30 days. So I'm looking through my notes again. Um, so let me just uh, double check sure. on that before I actually say <laughs> let, let, a, a definitive date, but it's coming up soon, uh, is my point. She's right. got a limited amount of time, and obviously you can file the notice of appeal, and a lot of times, you know, you don't have your stuff ready, and these lawyers go back to the court and they ask for an extension of time, and they're granted an extension of time. Uh, so that's often how uh, those things go.